Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 190 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's nice to see you. It's Tuesday, May the 10th, 2011. I know, it's flying by. But what time is it in the future? What time is it in the future, people? In Australia and all around the world. <laughs> We're joking in the chat room before the show about how everyone else is from the future. Some are here. Uh, you know, they, they actually had to travel back, uh, you know, up to 12 hours to, to be here with us tonight. Mm-hmm. Missed it on Tuesday night, so here they are Wednesday morning, and they're they're checking it out. Hi, Pyrus Rock, by the way, <laughs> just waking up on a Wednesday morning, enjoying the show. It's nice to see everybody. So a bit of a shout out to Codars360, who mm-hmm. has watched the show numerous times, but is joining us live for the first time tonight. So welcome. Yeah. Hey, I am Boris Karloff and Gadwill Office and Jot. How's the uh, how's the sound making do tonight? Oh, you are we had quite good the adventure now. last week, did we not? Uh, yeah, we did. Sound was an adventure. We had uh, quite a few problems with uh, with some of the microphones, and you'll you'll see in my blog cat 5tv slash blog that we've been testing some options, and uh, just want to make. Uh, uh, just a kind of a shout out and a, and a big thanks to Music Pro here in Barrie, there uh, on the south end of Barrie, on Barrie View Drive, and they have just been a great help to us as we try to uh, to get through this uh, audio issue and and just helping us to diagnose, you know, figure out okay what's our best option. Uh, also, uh, some other people involved in that as well. But tonight they've uh, they've lent me this headset microphone uh, in order to get us through the show. So really, really hoping that that works out well. Some people are saying that the volume level is uh, is a little bit low. And uh, we can check on that. Seems all right. Cool, cool. Well, it is so good to see everybody. All right. So we've got uh, Hillary joining us as well, who's uh, still at school. Hill, it is great to see you. Hey, everyone. Glad to be here. Hopefully, I'm coming in loud and clear this week, and and you can hear me and see me okay. And I'm glad because guess what? There is lots coming up in the newsroom. The RCMP in Nova Scotia, Canada, has issued a warning about callers seeking access to your home computer. An Ubuntu computer that costs only $25 and fits in your keychain may be available within a year. What's next? Smartphones as thin as a piece of paper? Yup. And lastly, Sony's PlayStation Network may stay offline as late as May 31st. Ooh. So stick around because these stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. Hillary, thank you so much. We're looking forward to that. Uh, I do have some sad news to announce tonight that uh, I didn't want to have to give this news, but our good friend John has tendered his resignation to the show. Uh, John has been our director of videography as well as uh, he's operated the camera for uh, a very long time now. And uh, as you know, he, uh, he married our, uh, our news girl, <laughs> Christy Burton, uh, who became Christy Van Noort. And, uh, and uh, since he's finished school now, he's decided that, uh, that it's time to, to move on from Category 5. And we do uh, wish him all the best. And uh, certainly we welcome you to pop an email uh, specifically to, to John. Uh, you can email it to me live at category5.tv. That's the easiest way because then uh, just say that it's for John and I will forward it uh, directly along just to, uh, so that you can express your thanks to John for all the work that he's done for us uh, over the years. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, of course, has, has been responsible for working the camera and, uh, and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, everything that you you know it's it's like the the least appreciated job in the whole place because as far as you know you you don't get to see the guy most mm-hmm. of the time uh sometimes you hear his voice in the background and stuff but he's the guy who was uh who was working that and and making sure that the show looked as good as possible so uh so we're going to miss him a lot i know we break them in and then they leave us but uh, speaking of Nexus missing says, people though yeah. where's eric been eric's been uh off since the power surge and every week he's 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 such a trooper and he's such a good guy. I, I love the guy. 
he's he's okay. Well, how are things this week? And, well, okay, we're still. You know, I've borrowed one microphone from the music <laughs> store to try to get through. You know, because we're we're down two microphones. We had three. Now we're down to one. So the music store's loaned us one, and we're trying to figure out a solution. You can find out more about that issue in my blog. Um, and then there's the server. Mm-hmm. With the server being at half mast, as as if you will, it um, it can only have one camera. <laughs> Fair enough. Where we're at right now. <laughs> so it it's this it's this in between kind of time where we're not really you know it's it, we're making do um and i feel bad that eric can't be here on account of the technical issues that we have it's a it's really a case of we've got one camera to work with we've got two microphones if you include the loner <laughs> so we're 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 gonna get there so uh so i would like to say thank you to everybody who is who has pitched in financially uh if they were able uh, at category 5.tv your donations are going to go directly towards replacing any of the equipment that we can. For example, the server is our biggest expense, and that's going to cost us about $3,000 to replace when it's all said and done. Uh, plus, we've got that nasty HST here in Ontario, <laughs> which is 13% yeah. on anything we buy. So great. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so you know, $3,000 plus the 13% mm-hmm. tax that we have to pay to the government. So not that there's anything wrong with that, just in case they're watching <laughs> and they, you know, oh, no, that guy. Discretion. <laughs> but it's something that we have to take into account, right? So, but I'd like to thank everybody who has donated and, and it's it's been adding up. And, and one of the things that uh, that I hope people understand, when you think, if you think that you're, you know, if you're in a position where you can't give much, and I don't, wa- I don't want to turn it into a, you know, here we are, it's a, it's a we're doing a share or something. Um, but I- if, if, a, a very small portion of our viewers were each to give five or ten dollars. We would have that server this week. Oh, it adds up so quickly. Oh, yeah. it would be incredible. So, um, and there have been a, a number of viewers who who have pitched in in that way. There have been a number of viewers who have also been able to uh, to support us uh, with a with a larger contribution. And we're very thankful for every contribution that's come in, uh, and we appreciate that. And, and it's it is working mm-hmm. towards being able to replace the damaged equipment and getting Eric back in his seat. This week, we have <laughs> some big news. Gadwill, congratulations. Gadwill is joining us in the chat room here as Gadwill office. Everybody uh, give a shout out to him and a big congratulations. He is the first viewer ever in the history of Category 5 Technology TV to surpass the 1,000 viewer points. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> is that because of the shirt last week? Well, the shirt, shirt. the shirt was, you know, that was helpful for sure. Well, it bumped it over, didn't it? It, it got him awfully close. I remember uh, he, <laughs> he messaged me late last week saying, one more day and I'm going to have that one more viewer point from logging in. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what flipped the switch as far as his thousand viewer points go. So he got a, uh, an honor medal on our website, category5.tv, and you can find out all about that in my blog as well, cat5.tv slash blog. And uh, just want to say congratulations to Gadwill and thanks, because in order to get to that point where you've got a 1,000 viewer points, you really have to be a very active member of the community, and, and it really means a lot to us and to myself personally when we have viewers like Gadwill who are willing to put so much work into making this community happen. And joining in the chat room and being a, a very active part of the forums and uh, and even to the point of, of keeping those things going uh, and being actively involved in beta testing and things like that. So these are ways that Gadwill has pitched in uh, here at Category 5. And uh, and we didn't, you know, we just thank him for that. And uh, we've got a couple of people who are hot on his on his tail there. <laughs> Tordo, if you can believe it, who uh, joins us from Germany, is all the way up at 724 points wow, so far. Wow, that's pretty close. <laughs> And right behind that is Strager, who is at 715. While we're on the topic of viewer <laughs> points, though, I'm pretty certain that we've got a couple of viewer points that we might be able to award this evening. As you see, I am, uh, I'm wearing my cardigan tonight. That's well, very nice. Cardigan, cardigan. And if you squint, we actually almost lose you in the background. I know. Isn't that awesome? So he stays like really still. You can hardly see him. My cardigan <laughs> blends into the curtain. Fantastic. All I have to do is like pull my head in like a turtle. <laughs> that's, that's all you got to do. <laughs> Whoa. No green screen necessary. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, we are super cool. <laughs> we are super cool, but it has nothing to do with my cardigan. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's see what I've got here. Uh, looking at viewer submitted pictures for this week, we've got Agamotto. 
who cardigan. not only says live long and prosper with this photo, you can tell, but also says this is his favorite cardigan because he can wear it with neon. Very cool. I don't know what that means. I guess no. this. I guess Agamotto <laughs> likes to wear neon under his cardigan, and that's cool. I'm wearing kind of like green under my cardigan. It's not quite neon, but uh, but that's awesome. And that's a zip-up cardigan, and it goes to show that, once again, we will honor zip-up cardigans. Agamotto, <laughs> thanks for the photo. Uh, and I will award you with 100 viewer points for that. We've also got Brian M. Murray. Oh, I like that. That's, that's the traditional... I was going to say, is. that looks like... What I would assume a cardigan was. If you saw somebody walking down the street wearing that cardigan, you would immediately say, <laughs> wow, check out that guy's cardigan. It's a great cardigan. That's that what is, I would say. That's the real deal right there. <laughs> I'd like to know what the shirt says underneath. It says something about doing it with Ubuntu, which uh, is, is, I guess that's fantastic. I'm trying to get a look at that. Uh, <laughs> let us know there, uh, Brian, what... Uh, what the shirt says. Uh, Ryan watches uh, Category 5 TV using his boxy box on a 37-inch television set. And he says it looks absolutely superb. Wow. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. That's fun. 37-inch TV. Yeah. Life-size. It's <laughs> like my glowing head just right there in your living room. Uh, that's very cool. Uh, also, uh, Brian uh, was very uh, generous with his donation towards... Uh, uh, purchasing a new server for the studio here, and we want to thank him as well, uh, in addition to uh, to everybody else who has pitched in uh, over the past several weeks. Thank you for submitting your uh, viewer photos. Those are the only two that I believe we got this week, uh, but if you'd like to get your 100 viewer points, uh, you can just send me a picture of you wearing a cardigan, and if you'd like to know what it is about the cardigan, 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 get on to cat5.tv slash cardigan. What are you shaking your head at? <laughs> Just, no, that was awesome. I wasn't shaking. It's implying how awesome the dance was. Stop. Don't encourage him. That's Perfect Ubuntu bad. 6 <laughs> is out. If you are using Ubuntu Linux, here's your opportunity to get some of the uh, most awesome add-on features uh, directly on Ubuntu. And, of course, it supports Ubuntu 11.04, the Natty Narwhal. So get on to perfectubuntu.category5.tv. And you'll be able to get that free software. What? I didn't say anything. That's all my it was announcements enunci for the week. <laughs> Your enunciation was very good. Was it? Yes. I was stumbling over Category 5 because <laughs> I was about to say the Cat5.tv. See, even I get stumped on our domain names. Perfectbuntu.category5.tv. That's where you can get that software. Shall we jump into some viewer questions? <laughs> oh, I think we shall. All right. All right. So tonight, our first question is from Invincible Mutant. He hey, says, Invincible. thanks for the mobile site. What a quick response. Brilliant. And you are just adorable. <laughs> just missed the live show, but thanks for having a recorded version available so quickly. You are freaking adorable. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Invincible Mutant. I think this is referring back to uh, an episode where we were where you were about complaining because no one thought Aww. you were adorable. Thanks, Invincible <laughs> Mutant. If I start getting a bunch of emails from, uh, do I need to give a hundred viewer points for people who call me? No, that'll just get out of hand. I think <laughs> that'll get out of hand, but it'll make me feel really cute. <laughs> So that question is, yes. <laughs> do you I'm have a favicon that. to the mobile site so that ah. I can have the icon on my Android home? I see. Perhaps Krista could show it to your fans or audience how to get a square favicon done for your website, as well as show it how to stick the favicon on your mobile or website in general on your iPod. The show would be very interesting, I think. Cheers, Invincible Mutant. <laughs> All right. A fav icon is what you see in your browser window when you're on a website up at the next to the address. See how we've got that gorgeous oh, what logo. What a great logo. Right there. So in order to get that, the fav icon is usually in the root folder of a website. And there it is. But the problem with this one for your purpose is that it's 16 by 16 pixels. It's gonna be really low quality. There is, if you go to mobile.category5.tv, now, it doesn't look right in Firefox, obviously, because it's designed for mobile display, uh, but it will look proper on there. But through Firefox, if you hit Control-U, 
you're going to see that there is a icon.ping. That is the Apple Touch icon. So that's what ends up on an Apple iOS device, such as the iPhone, the iPod Touch, or the iPad. You can grab that image, and that's more what you're looking for as far as an icon goes. So if we were to, for example, copy that reference, images slash icon dot ping. Here's something interesting for you. Okay, so that's going to, now I've pasted that at the end of mobile.cat5.tv slash images slash icon dot ping, and it looks like that. So that's what you would see on your iOS device if you added it to your dashboard. So I'm going to copy the image location, and I'm going to go to Google, but what I will do is I'll, in fact, I know what I'm looking for, so I'll post a link specifically to this uh, in the show notes for episode number 190. Uh, but what we're looking for is fave icon generator, and we're going to go for the one from Dynamic Drive. Tools.dynamicdrive.com slash fave icon. And what you want to do is just uh, browse for the file, which I haven't saved actually, so I'm going to actually have to save that to my computer. Throw that onto my desktop or something, okay? There we are. Go over here and browse for it on my desktop. There it is. And do I want to merge it with a desktop icon and a 48 by 48 large icon? I can do that because my source image is 57 by 57. So let's do that. Create the icon. And there you go. Now down at the bottom, it shows you a download fave icon button. And it seems convoluted, but if you follow through, this is really, really fast. And there you go. This is a favicon.ico, and it's full quality, right up to 48 by 48. So that's one way that you could get a really good, high-quality fave icon for Category 5 TV. And, of course, a fave icon, if you want to add one to your site, we will be doing that with, uh, with our site. But uh, we'll be using the same tool from tools.dynamicdrive.com slash fave icon. That's F-A-V-I-C-O-N. And we'll uh, we'll show you how to do that in a future episode. But in the meantime, I'll post links for you in the uh, in the show notes for episode number one ninety. Great. Hope that helps. So next question is from Rodney Wright. Hey, Rodney. Says, how do you install Pogo Plug so it works with the Ubuntu eleven point zero four? Hmm. Okay. So it <laughs> depends on the nature of your question. If if what you're asking is how do you connect to your physical pogo plug device so you've got the hardware and you want to be able to connect to it there's a program called pogo plug fs and that's freely available uh... if you own a pogo plug you can just log in through my.pogoplug.com and you'll see the downloads button and click there uh... you can also get it at pogoplug.com i'm gonna see if because i know that we've already done a show where we in detail went through the step-by-step -step on how to do that it was episode number 166. So I would encourage you to check out that episode because the, the rules have not changed as far as setting that up. And that walks you through setting it up on the Linux operating system. The episode that you're looking for is 166. The episode is about the DDWRT router firmware. And our secondary topic was specifically mounting your Pogoplug device uh, in both Windows and Linux. So I did a tutorial on how to do that. So that said, that is to mount your physical hardware device, the Pogo plug that has an external USB hard drive plugged into it, for example. That will allow you to access that hard drive through Linux from anywhere in the world using your Pogo plug as the source. If what you're asking for is a Pogo plug software edition for Linux, which is a totally different product. Now, Pogo plug, remember, launched a new piece of software for uh, Windows and Mac, which allows you to turn your internal hard drive on your computer into pardon me, a Pogo plug like piece of uh, hardware so you can access your files from anywhere. The disadvantage to that is that your, heart or your computer has to be on all the time. So it, the Pogo plug, one of the great big advantages of the device itself is that it's very low power usage. You've got a, a solid state device that has no moving parts and it's on all the time, but it's, it's only using a very small fraction of the power that your computer does. So the software version, on the other hand, your computer has to be on. If you're using Linux and you want to use a similar kind of software, there, there's nothing from Pogoplug that does that. 
Uh, it is specifically Windows and Mac at this point. Um, Pogo Plug themselves, I, I've uh, sent them, I've got a Twitter message here from them, at Pogo Plug on Twitter. They say uh, that it's still on the radar eventually to have uh, Linux long term, but no dates as of yet. And I think that would probably have a lot to do with the way that uh, the Linux is different as far as security of the file system goes. I would think it would be more complicated. But then again, I don't know. Like the Mac having the software, you would think that it would be available. But I think it's just, I don't know what the reasoning for that is. I should ask and, and really drill them in that. <laughs> I think that would be a fantastic feature of Pogo Plug software because then I could install it on my Unraid server. And my Unraid server could become this massive massive Pogo Plug device. That'd be fantastic. So it depends on the nature of your question there. Uh, I think that uh, what you're looking for is going to be found in 166. Great. Cool. So from Zabata. Hey, Zabata. Oh, he says, hi, Robbie. I want to ask you if you could do a series on setting up Ubuntu server and how to manage it. Thanks in advance. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to know more about what type of server you're asking about, uh, because as, as soon as you say a Linux or Ubuntu server, I'm wondering, like, do you mean Apache? Do you mean like a LAMP server with Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP for web hosting? Are you talking about uh, an LDAP server to run it as a, a domain controller on your network, or what kind of server is it that you're looking for? Uh, Linux is, is extremely versatile as far as what you can do with it, and Linux was really uh, conceived to be just a spectacular server operating system. So you have to imagine that while it's been on, it's been growing on the desktop over the past several years uh, due to a lot of these companies that are bringing out really good desktop Linux, you know, you've got Red Hat and Mandrake back in the day and uh, then Lin Lindos and Linspire and now we've got Ubuntu from Canonical and, and all the derivatives of that and Debian and then it's like there's so much growth going into the operating system now, but it, at its base, was always a server operating system, so there's a lot that can be done as far as a server goes. So let me know more about what kind of server you're looking to uh, to set up. We did set up a LAMP stack using, um, using Turnkey Linux uh, a little while back as well, and you'll find that in the show archives on our website as well. Uh, category5.tv. If you'd like to learn a little bit, just really quickly, about how to scan our website for stuff, you'll see over here on the home page there's a site search. And if I type in, for example, LAMP, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, it'll give me, uh, okay, time to restart, turnkey, see that? How quick I got? 169 turnkey Linux LAMP stack. Right? So this whole episode is dedicated to deploying a turnkey Linux server in a fraction of the time of a traditional build using turnkey Linux virtual appliances. So that may be something that you might be interested in, episode number 169. Um, but in the meantime, if, if that's not covered in that episode, you can let me know, and I'd love to uh, take it one step further and go through a tutorial for you. Absolutely. Cheers. Okay, so you are all going to have to hang in with me for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this it's one a doozy, is, it? is from, and I'm so sorry if I say this wrong, Ing Kenyap and you'll have to correct me. Uh, he says, Hi, Robbie. Thanks for answering my question about Sopcast Player. My question in the chat room last week was too short and unfortunately it drove me to a page that was used before the PPA was made available. Oh. I used a PPA indeed on Ubuntu Natty. All you have to do is Google for Sopcast, or so, sorry, Sopcast Player Ubuntu Natty. You will find the PPA link on WebUp8. However, I've installed this successfully on one of my machines, but failed on the rest with the following message. Oh, I don't know if this I can say this all. <laughs> Unpacking the... It's an apt get error, people. Okay. An apt get error. A doozy of a one. Do I have to read got? it all? Well, I, can, <laughs> I could probably summarize it real quick. Uh, okay, it's going through DPKG, actually. There's an error in libstdc++5, which is, I believe... C++ compiler uh, version 3.3. .3. That's right. 3.3.6-21 Ubuntu. So that is having trouble unpacking, which means that the file must... There, I don't know, there must be something wrong with the file. Uh, or there's a dependency issue. What I would suggest that you try there is get into your terminal and actually do 
uh, instead of using DPKG for that particular piece of the, the dependencies, try using apt-get. So type sudo space uh, apt-get, which is apt-get. I'll just... <laughs> Here we go. Okay. That's what I would do. And if you run that command, it's going to try to install that using the repositories. You're going to have to have universe enabled, uh, which you can do in system administration software sources. Enter your password. Now this is going back, I mean, uh, the version 3.3 of C++. This is an old compiler. Uh, so it's going to come from backports and uh, and probably universe. So Ubuntu updates tell it to get it from backports, and I'll bet you that's where it's going to find it from. And uh, what that'll do is it'll try to get it out of the repositories with a tested archive that's good to install on your version of Ubuntu 11.04 um, and uh, C C plus plus 3.3 did come back as of I believe Karmic. It might have been a little later than that. It might have been um, Meerkat. <laughs> I was trying to think, what was the M1? Oh, yes. Maverick Meerkat. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Give it a try. App, get it, install it, and then try running your dev package again for your player. And do that as, as well. There's another error, if oh, I may. Sorry. There was another package there that I see. Uh, so you got C++. And then the uh, sp dash auth, but that sp dash auth is provided, I think, by your. That's part of the package that you're trying to install. So try that with just the C plus plus one to start. Let us know, okay? And here's open, because that is a long shot, but yet not so much, <laughs> based on the error that you showed us there. Okay, did that, so did that help you get through? <laughs> <laughs> that was, was better. That, that was All good. Right. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, so. <laughs> for, sorry for extending the geekiness of the show there for, for a couple minutes. That oh, was, you're not sorry. That was, no, I'm not. <laughs> Once in a while, i got to infuse a little bit of geekdom into the show. That was that was. It worked. Top. That happened. Yeah, I just lost. Look at that. They're just dropping off all the... I all know. The we have like five there. people left in the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, last question of the night. Okay. It says, Dear Robbie and the gang, I'm trying to run hey. programs written in Studio 2008 on a Windows XP machine and come up a fault in Ubuntu when I try to run it. The program mm -hmm. just stops with the egg timer and arrow running. Does Ubuntu need to load Net Framework 3.5 or higher with Wine? We Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> we are trying to develop software to run on both Windows and Ubuntu operating systems. Ubuntu doesn't seem to like running programs you'd write, even a very simple one written and compiled on Visual Basic 6. Is that problem due to Wine not supporting all the Windows APIs? The show is great, and the content is very interesting. Peter. Okay. The first thing that comes to mind... Now, of course, you're, you're trying to create Windows applications to be compatible with Linux, which, which is okay. I mean, you're, you're trying to run them through Wine, but then you're setting up a dependency of, you know, that you, the user's got to have Wine. It'd be, it'd be really advantageous to, to develop your software, if possible, in such a way that it's actually native on each of your environments. Um, the only thing that comes to mind really, without knowing too much about this end of things, because uh, you know I'm a PHP developer, and, and back in the days when I was programming on Windows, it, it was a lot different. Um, there's a, a, an app, a script uh, from uh, Kegel.com called Wine Tricks, and it's just a script that lets you install a whole bunch of additional wine frameworks and uh, you know different libraries and things that certainly in your case could probably be uh, extremely helpful and even if it doesn't fix your existing pro like the current problem I definitely check it out uh, kegel.com slash wine slash wine tricks and that's just a script that uh, that you can save to your computer on Linux and uh, set it as executable and then run it I would give that a try. Let me know if that uh, if that gives you the libraries that you need. It's just you know it's just a script that grabs some stuff from repositories and stuff, and it is it is rather fantastic and it's specific to Wine. Um, but as far as actually you know you're programming for Windows and trying to get it to work on on Linux, there could be other issues there. Try uh, one thing that you could try 
is rather than just double clicking on the executable, the Windows executable when you bring it over to Ubuntu, is to uh, load a terminal session, like open terminal, and then go to the folder where the executable is and type wine space and then the name of the executable. Uh, I think that would do it or f you know follow the prompts to, to get it to open. Uh, you might need to put a quote or quotes around it um, or wine space dot slash and then the name of the executable dot exe. Something along those lines should launch the application but it will output the error messages if there are any or if there are any missing libraries or dependencies for you know that wine needs to have in order to run that uh, that particular application it should spew out an error message to your terminal and then that becomes kind of a log for you and you know what what you need in order to get that thing working on uh, on your Linux computer so I hope that helps uh, we're out of time for viewer questions tonight we appreciate your questions you can email us live at category 5.tv we would love to uh, get your questions in there or join us in the chat room category 5.tv and in the meantime, Hillary, it's, uh, it's off to you. Hey everyone, from the Category 5.TV newsroom. An increasingly popular style of cybercrime has popped up in Nova Scotia, Canada. The RCMP is warning Nova Scotians about someone trying to gain access to home computers. A caller claims to be from Microsoft and talks the user through steps to fix issues with their computer and even remove viruses for them. The person actually provides instructions to allow them to access the person's personal computer, with which they could access your personal files, obtain your banking information, and even install tools which would allow them to monitor your computer without you knowing. We're hearing about these types of scams more and more these days. For the record, if you initiate a support call with a company such as Microsoft or another company you deal with, it is possible they may need to remotely connect to your computer in order to provide certain services such as fixing your antivirus or patching your system. However, these companies will never initiate that call. If someone you don't know calls you and requests to access your computer, don't allow it. David Braben is a well-known game developer who runs the UK development studio Frontier Developments. Over his career, his studio has brought us the Roller Coaster Tycoon series, Thrillville, Lost Winds, and most recently, Connectimals. In the background, however, Braben has been trying to tackle another problem, getting programming and general learning of how computers work back into the schools. Braben argues that education uh, since we entered the 2000s, has turned towards teaching useful skills, such as writing documents in a word processor, how to create presentations, and basic computer use skills. But that has been replaced, but that has replaced more computer science, like skills such as basic programming and understanding the architecture and hardware contained in a computer. His solution is to manufacture a very low cost PC that can be given to kids for free. Robin has developed a tiny USB stick that PC, um, a PC that has an HDMI port in one end and a USB port in the other. You can plug it into an HDMI socket and then connect a keyboard via the USB port, giving you a fully functioning machine running a version of Linux. The cost? About $25. This tiny PC uses 700 megahertz ARM 11, ARM 11 processor coupled with 128 megabytes of RAM and runs OpenGLES 2.0, allowing for decent graphics performance with a 1080p output confirmed. Storage is provided by an SD card slot. We can expect to run it to run a range of Linux distributions, but it looks like Ubuntu may be the distro it ships with. That means it'll handle web browsing, run office applications, and give the user a fully functional computer to play with as soon as it's plugged in. All that, and it can be carried in your pocket or on a keychain. This tiny, cheap PC is going to be distributed through a new charitable foundation called the Raspberry Pi Foundation. That's Pi P-I. It also will promote uh, computer science studies within the schools. As for when the Raspberry Pi device will become available, Robin says he hopes it will be distributing it within the next 12 months. A prototype flexible smartphone made of electronic paper has been created by Canadian researchers. The paper phone can perform the same functions of bulkier smartphones, such as make and take calls, send messages,
play music, or even display ebooks. Creator Dr. Roel Vert Vertigal says everything is going to look and feel like this within five years. In a statement, he has said this computer looks, feels, and operates like a small sheet of interactive paper. You interact with it by bending it into a cell phone, flipping the corner to turn a page, or writing on it with a pen. The paper phone prototype went on display today at the Computer Human Interaction Conference in Vancouver. And more than a week after Sony told the world to expect some functionality to return to the PlayStation Network, it has not happened. You can't play your games online, make digital purchases, or download demos. The service remains completely dead. Analyst Nobuo Karashi told the Wall Street Journal that he estimates Sony could be on the hook for $1.25 billion lost in business. He says it could take months for the security woes to settle and how this may affect consumer confidence in Sony's online services in the long run. And this is harder to assess in the long run. According to Bloomberg, Sony is expecting to have the service restored by May 31st. Keep your fingers crossed. You can get these full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our wonderful community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor or mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Hillary, thank you so much. No problem. What are your thoughts about this whole PlayStation thing? Like, I'm not to. I mean, it's it's all over the news, so I don't mm -hmm. want to just talk about that. But it's unreal. Like, the yeah, consumer true. confidence is just dropping by the minute. Well, how long has it been now? You were saying it's like two, three, three weeks. Several now? weeks. Oh, and that long now? Well, we're talking about May. I mean, when you factor in May thirty first, twenty one days from now. Wow. What do you do with yourself? <laughs> Seriously. You have to go outside and get fresh air. <gasps> Which is all fine and good, but I mean, we're talking about a security breach here mm -hmm. that is beyond the scale of, you know, this is the second biggest online gaming company in the world. Yeah. And this this has been breached to this level? Yeah, that's frightening. That's scary. That's really frightening. <laughs> but it just goes to show, I mean, you can't really trust your data yeah. with, with even the these huge companies. Like, you think... Well, yeah, Google's it's... got a lot of my data, but how safe is that data? It would be really scary if that data got ex exposed. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody uh, had posted in the uh, in comments uh, to this news article that uh, one of the things that you never want to do, and and you know we encourage people to register on our website, of course, and we and we welcome you to submit your birth date and everything, and that lets us, you know, whatever it's it's in there. I don't know if it asks you for that or not, but uh, people are saying, you know, you you enter your credit card information, you enter your full name to register on these services like the PlayStation Network, you, mm -hmm. you enter your birth date with the birth year, all of a yeah. sudden your identity is, you know, with that yeah. amount of information about you, with your, your full name and your birth date and year, they can pretty much track down who you are and where, where you're from and, and get your social insurance information and all this and that. They've got your credit card information. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's scary stuff. Very scary stuff. That's, that's my thing. How about you? You're just like, I can't play games. <laughs> can't stay up till 4 a.m. anymore. Think about all the gaming companies that <laughs> develop these games specifically to play on the PlayStation Network. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're losing all this revenue, but not only that, who's going to go into the Superstore this summer and say, oh, I'm going to buy that game for 80 bucks that only <laughs> works on the PlayStation Network? Yeah. No, they're going to stand there and they're going to go, you know what, I don't think I'm going to mm. buy that because <laughs> who's to say it's going to work? Yeah. Who's to say that that game, if I pay 80 bucks for it, is even going to work? And they're not going to give me my money back. We, we've seen that historically with Sony, with the way that they pulled uh, the, the Linux operating system ability from the PlayStation 3, for example. So I think uh, it's a terrible situation. Terrible situation. This episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug and Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. All right, we're going to jump into our topic of the night, which is Web Development Part 10. Awesome. 10. Get on over to demo.cat5.tv slash 008. That's where we're going to be working from tonight. And uh, on that site, you'll see, that, uh, you'll see exactly where we, uh, where we wound up last week. 
I'm going to bring up the site here myself as well. Demo.cat5.tv slash 008. And there we have it. That's where we are. So, we talked about lorem ipsum last week. You're familiar with lorem ipsum? I am. It's like, <laughs> how would you describe lorem ipsum? It's like faux Latin. It's faux, yeah. It's it just, was originally text. supposed to be based on like a Latin prayer or something. I think it's gone since then and expanded okay. to different things. But, but we use it in development and in, in design. Uh, you use it extensively. It's copy to, filler. It really is yeah. just filler. It's like material for here's what your text is going to look like when it's on your website. Mm -hmm. So one of the sites that I really love is just lipsum.org, L-I-P-S-U-M.org. It's so simple. It's so easy to do. You choose how many paragraphs, how many words, or so on and so forth that you would like. You know, if I go five paragraphs and hit generate lorem ipsum, it's just going to spew out a lorem ipsum bunch of paragraphs that I can just copy and paste to my clipboard. And there it is. That's what it looks like. Lorem ipsum dolar sit amet consecutar. However that is said. My Latin is, is lacking. There we go. So now I can copy that to my clipboard, and I've got lorem ipsum to work with. So if I bring up my index.php, I'm going to paste that text in, and that becomes my filler text so that I can see how my text is going to work within uh, within this site. Because right now it just says, test, test, test. <laughs> Not really a valid test. So paste that in. You'll see that there are line breaks. So we're going to add some actual HTML line breaks here. XML compliant, of course, with the slash. Okay. I'm sure we don't need a full five paragraphs of lorem ipsum, but alas, that's what I've got in my clipboard. <laughs> Refresh our site, and you'll see that based on this, how this is going to wrap. Now we can see that there's a little bit of an issue here with, I don't know if that's relatively positioned. How did we position that? Let's take a look. But it's actually wrapping in such a way that you know we don't really like the way that that's wrapping. Uh, but we can always touch that up down the road as well. And, uh, and I don't want to get too caught up on semantics because it's really about learning the functionality mm -hmm. and how we can get this to work. Um, we don't need to, to get too particular. But what this looks like to me is that this item here, this is the Polaroid, is probably positioned relatively because it looks like it's holding this space. Uh, in which case we are going to, uh, we'll fix that uh, before we finish this site, but we're not going to worry about it tonight. One of the things that I notice is that the text is pretty much touching the edge of the site in every regard. So we might want to add some padding to that. I'm going to look at your original mock-up here. You can get all of the uh, files that you see us using tonight. Uh, that's our, uh, our mock-up, the actual uh, PHP file, the CSS file, everything is downloadable for free at cat5.tv slash webdev. And uh, on top of that, you'll be able to um, down, uh, download and view each episode of the series. Uh, okay, so I can see that what you've done is you've got a, a fair amount of padding on, mm -hmm. on any of the sides. So let's, uh, let's determine how much padding that is. You'll remember that I use my, you know, just a quick way is I've used my, wow, zoom really messes with it, but I've used my square marquee to simply measure you know, I'm just going to go like that. I'm measuring like this. And I'm going to go edit, copy visible, or copy merged in uh, Photoshop. I'm using the GIMP. It's GNU Image Manipulation Program, and it is free. GIMP.org, <laughs> freely downloadable. And I can see that that is 63 pixels wide. So the padding that you've got on there is 60 pixels. So what we'll do is we're going to add that padding to the body area of our site, which is main body main body is the div wrapper that is that our text is contained within. So if we open our CSS file, that's basically our style sheet that uh, allows us to stylize any of the uh, elements within our site. Uh, you'll see that main body already exists, but there is no padding. So I know that the padding looks to be about equal on all sides, so I'm going to go just padding 60 pixels. If I wanted to, I could just do padding top, or padding left, or padding right or padding bottom. But if I just say padding, it's going to do all four sides at once. If I do, for example, 10 picks, 60 picks, that's going to add 
10 pixels to the top, 10 pixels to the bottom, 60 pixels to the left, 60, 60 pixels to the bottom. So you can use that to cut down on the amount of uh, stuff that isn't necessary within your CSS file because you don't need to go padding top, padding bottom, padding left, padding right. You can you get can it this. all in one. Yeah, yeah. You can, your semantics can be a little more correct than that. Okay, so I've uploaded that CSS file, and if I refresh, you'll see that the padding is pretty much identical to what you were going for there mm. with your mock-up. There are a couple of things that I haven't implemented into our website version of the site, and that, again, is just to try to keep moving mm -hmm. things along. And uh, So that's like the arrow that is a part of this, uh, this blue area, the menu, the submenu that's going to go here, the text that's going to be at the bottom of this photo. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is, is at the end of, and I, I wasn't showing you there, but what I meant was in this area and the text at the bottom of the photo, um, at the end of this series, we're going to, again, give you access to the files, and those files are going to be completed. So using the knowledge that you're gaining from this series, you're going to be able to say, oh, that's how I can do that and then take that and, and use that information. We don't need to show you everything on, on the actual broadcast. So, uh, so next up, we've got uh, our font face for the, uh, for the site itself. What was that? Was that I'm Arial? I'm pretty sure it's just Arial. Yeah. Arial. All right. Good old just boring so. Arial. It's, it's not that boring, <laughs> though. It, it's clean. And when you're, when you're building a website, you want things to look clean. You want mm. things to to be easily readable, and you want them to translate across platforms. Sometimes you get a font that looks fantastic on a Mac, but looks terrible on a Windows computer, especially like Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. Internet Explorer does really poor font rendering with its bad anti-aliasing. Um, so, you know, that you've got to take that kind of thing into account. So main body, I'm going to paste in font family, Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. That is, I've copied that from my menu, because it's the same font. And just to recap, that what that means is, if the user has the Arial font, that's the one that we prefer. However, if they don't have that, let's go and fall back onto Helvetica. And of course, if they have neither Arial or Helvetica, then we're going to just pick whatever their system sans serif font is. And that's how that works. Okay, so I'm going to upload that change. I'm going to refresh, and you'll see immediately that, oh, that's the wrong website there. So there it is uh, with default Times New Roman. As soon as I refresh, there it is with Arial. Looks a lot cleaner. The uh, the edges are nice and just crisp. It just stands out a lot better. Font color, was it black? I think so. Okay. So color number 000. Okay, just to force it just in case any other elements uh, change the color. Um, sometimes what you want to do is make it a color that's not quite black. Say 333 is just a little bit off from black, and it just white on or black on white can be a little bit harsh on the eyes. Um, so just by making it just a slightly, slightly lighter, it just lightens it up just a little bit. And that's a that's a possibility for certain sites. Now in this case, Krista wanted this black, so <laughs> I you I can must make it it's dark gray. <laughs> I won't, I won't be angry. I was going to make it green if you keep that up. But I like green, so, you know, <laughs> that's okay. Right. We just don't want to, we just don't want to anger her. So, <laughs> so we're going to leave it at black. It'll be zero, zero, zero in main body from now on. Don't ever change it. I'm so kidding. <laughs> I'm so kidding. He says he's kidding, but after the show, he just points and laughs at me and says, sucker. That's pretty much how it goes down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that is what Lorem Ipsum is going to look like within this site. Now. Beyond that, is there anything else to the to the text formatting that you want done? Everything looks pretty good at, at this point. Oh, let's have a gander. Um. Yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, I think we're off. good. Yeah. Looking at it on your Mac, which doesn't have Desktop Presenter running, so I can't switch over. Oh, wink, oh wink, sorry. Wink, wink. You want me to turn it on? <laughs> sure, turn it on, and then we can, then sure. we can see your computer, too. Okay, so that is the mock-up that Krista go. created. You remember from episode number one of the uh, the web development series. And here is our actual working website. This is a real website with actual text. <laughs> it's not a graphic. Everything is text. It's search engine optimized, ready, or ready to be search engine optimized. The buttons of the menu are actually text. So everything is ready for the search engine. It's just nice and clean. It's nice and, uh, you know, it's, it's all text. It's really nice that way. Uh, on your mock-up, that's where it ends. Yeah, it's got a little bit of red at the bottom. So what we'll do is main body. 
margin dash bottom 60 picks. Remember, margins happen on the outside of the element. Now when I refresh, oh, and it's doing it uh, on the outside of, oh, because it's it should be, now you see what I've done there? Is that added 60 picks to the bottom of here, because I accidentally put it on this element, which is within, it's contained within the wrapper element. Remember that element that we have in our index.php? So what I want to do is I want to add that margin to the wrapper instead. Wrapper. Give me a margin bottom, yo. Because I'm a wrapper. If there are any wrappers watching the show right now, I apologize for any offense <laughs> that I might have caused. Just so oh, you know. They have all signed off right now. <laughs> they are they gone. Got, yeah, that's just... This. We'll just leave that. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. All right, so that is not pushing it out, so I've got to look at my code here and see, okay, where am I? Okay, so I do have wrapper there, and that div ends down here. So, oh, now see, this is my mistake, and this is where we, we learn things as we go. Okay, because the wrapper being what's wrapping the outside, I think, if we change that to padding, no, I still don't have it. Stumped. For goodness you sake, just stumped. for the sake of time, I'm putting in a couple of line breaks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so never leaving those there. This is just to appease the, the Krista. The Krista. <laughs> it's still, why is it still not giving it to me? I'm doing it right. Hmm. This is like one of those movies where you build it up so far, and then yeah, it's like I will tell you how to do it, and then I'll do it, yeah. and it didn't do it. Suspense is killing you all. And then next time on Category Five, she knows me too well. <laughs> all right, so I will look at that because somewhere, you know, we've got we've got wrappers and and different divs and elements mm -hmm. that are, you know, what I've probably got floats. That are that I've got to clear both. Maybe what I'll do is I'll create a div for footer, and that footer will clear both, and it will have a height of 60 pixels, and it will fall. And right it will bottom. work. It will absolutely work. <laughs> but I'll test it before the show just to be certain. No, I'm just playing. Okay, so what I want to do, just because we're limited for time, you know what? That's that's all the time we're gonna have is to is to fix that. Anyways, to add that little mm -hmm. bit of padding at the bottom. So let's let's just give it a try. Let's go div ID equals. No, let's do this within this. We want it within our wrapper. But I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Because it's within that wrapper, I have to actually set the background to match the body. Okay. Eight hundred thousand. That was our nice red color, was it not? I believe. Oh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's still within the wrapper. <laughs> oh. So what I'll do? Imagine that we're gonna go back to index.php and pull that out. Come on, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. I didn't clear both. This is like a like a marathon for me. <laughs> Are you sweating? Is there... That's the lights. <laughs> That's the lights. <laughs> anyway. You know, when they debuted Windows 98, they crashed the entire system with a blue screen of death. So mm -hmm. to have a little bit of padding that's not happening at the bottom, I'll, I'll just do that another you know, time, and it's not a big deal. <laughs> you put anything into perspective like that, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Windows crashed. They failed worse. So, you know, don't mention it. Don't mention it. But you know what? 
<laughs> it's all good. Hey, you can uh, you can flatter us online at cat five dot tv slash f l a t t r. We'd love to have you flatter us, so uh, check that out. Um, and for this week, that's all we're going to do as far as web development goes. Next week, it's getting really exciting because we're actually going to take that site. We're going to splice it apart. You, you saw when we took our mock-up and we cut it up into images. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the source code and we're going to cut it up into includes. Ooh. Getting into some PHP. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to start to be able to see how the site is going to go from an HTML and CSS site into a real working PHP application as far as how the, uh, the website uh, runs on the server and how uh, different files are included into that. So check that out. That is next week on uh, Category 5 TV. Also, I'd encourage you to get onto our website, Category5.tv. Uh, if you're not already registered there, do make sure that you register. We'd love to have you as a part of our free community. And uh, also, as a registered user, you'll be able to vote on your favorite or non-favorite episodes. But definitely, we'd love to uh, get your, your stars. You can vote us uh, out of five stars how you like each episode. And we encourage you, even if, you uh, even if you're watching this episode right now, this is 190. After the show, we get it online after a couple of hours. Get onto our website and vote for it, even if you're not going to watch it again, even if you just watched it live. That's, you know, that, uh, that helps us to see uh, how you're enjoying the show, how you're enjoying the content. And uh, this is our final week to get your votes for the Wirecast contest. So cat5.tv slash win uh, for win, win a prize. We're giving away a free copy of Wirecast. That's the software that we use to broadcast Category 5 Technology TV. And if you uh, are at all interested in broadcasting, I encourage you to check that out. Uh, it's cat5.tv slash wirecast to find out more about the software. Uh, but I'd encourage you, please, get onto our website, cat5.tv slash win, and vote for your favorite ballots. And we're going to be drawing that uh, next week. So, cool. End of announcements. Vote, says Gadwill Office. Vote. Get out and vote. We've been through that this week, haven't oh, we? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, uh, what's been going on uh, around here lately? Wow. There's just there's so much mm -hmm. as far as you know what's what's happening with the studio and, and as we work towards uh, fixing up our, our issues. Um, I do encourage you to check out my blog, cat5.tv slash blog. It's a lot of fun to uh, get a little bit of behind-the-scenes uh, info about what happens here at the show. Stuff that we can't necessarily air on the the show itself. So, and uh, you're working on a a bio, I understand. I started it today. I started it <laughs> today. She's like, oh, today's category five day. I would better start making a bio me. so that I can say, like, when you say you started it, I you did opened, start it. You the opened likes, Word and you saved a file. Oh, called I my don't bio. touch Word. Okay, good. What do you Because I'm awesome. Well, you're on a Mac. I just well, I use Word iWork because you like to spend money for I, no reason. I, not for no reason. Have you seen this machine? It glows a lot. It has a, a beautiful <laughs> apple. Do you notice the mug? Have you been drinking that was intentional. That totally was totally intentional. That was rude. You looked in your cupboard. You're like, well, we've got SpongeBob, we've got Hershey's, and Ubuntu. Ubuntu. <laughs> just kind of just trying to work that in there, because eventually, you know, it's like the subliminal <laughs> message, and it's not for you. It's for her. Just to, you know, to, to try to get. Yeah. And what are you doing with this subliminal message of the apple? That's. It's that's not subliminal. Good. It's in your face. <laughs> really? it's, it's like, here it is. It's the apple. Boy. What is it with <laughs> Mac fanboys and their Apple? What do you mean? What, what is, it's awesome. The logo. No, I mean, seriously, my iPod. iPod Touch. Mm -hmm. it's, fan it's fantastic, i got to admit. I really love having it. It's, it's been a, a real mm -hmm. tool and a really nice thing to have. Waiting for the butt. Butt. I just don't understand <laughs> why, for one, it's got this etched, like laser etched Apple yeah. logo in the back. But I bought a protective case so that if mm -hmm. the kids ever drop it, it won't break. Mm -hmm. And it has a bevel in the case. So you can see so the that apple. you can see the apple. Yeah. Why? Because it's the logo. It's the, ident fanboy. It's the identification it's of a company. I don't get it. I create I logos, it. so I have to stand I behind wish them. <laughs> that us Ubuntu fanboys would be that in your face with our have coffee you seen mugs this? and our 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 devices and stickers on the back of our computers that glow. You we wish you were so cool. I wish I you was. You wish so cool. you were. <laughs> Hope everybody had a great week this week, and uh, we'll see you online. Category five TV. Been nice seeing you. 
and uh, can't wait until next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It's always uh, a pleasure to be here, and uh, and nice to nice to see so many friendly faces in the chat room. Mm-hmm. Nice to see some new faces as well. Absolutely. And it's good having you here. Thanks for joining oh, us again this week. Oh, it's always good to be here. And uh, Hillary has left us uh, for the evening, mm-hmm. but uh, always a pleasure to have her as well. And we miss Eric, but uh, he will be back. So you have a fantastic <laughs> week, and we'll see you next Tuesday night. See you, everyone. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.